Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you another way that you can create a branching scroll. Now, this is going to be a little more of a technical thing because it requires some forge welding, so I hope you guys will enjoy this video. <coughs> I've got a piece good and hot and it's all collared together and ready to take and be welded up at the end. Now if you all don't, if you all haven't seen the video yet, you might notice this one from a video that we did um, titled Double Shoulders. <coughs> I'll put the link to that video right up there and I'll also put one in the description so you guys can find the link to this video. But basically I've taken some different forged elements, some different scrolls and things that we've made in a previous video and we've, I've put them all through this little collar that I made and that's wedged them all in to hold them together so I can get a forge weld on all the individual ends. After we get that welded up, and I'm talking you through the process before I do it because it's going to happen fairly quick, I am going to heat this bar up and I'm going to upset this bar and draw a scarf on it. The same thing with those pieces that are in the fire. <coughs> I will cut off any excess material that I don't want I will cut a scarf on it and it has enough mass that then it will weld nicely, do a little lap weld action on it to this actual bar here. Now this bar will turn into something at a later date, but that's for another time. So I've got this piece heating up in the fire, hopefully you guys can hear me just fine. And I'm not shouting at the camera. I've got the collar on there, things are kind of loosening up just a bit which is okay, we just don't want them to get too loose. We want them to stay, we want them to stay together if we can. They're coming up to heat now and I'm getting ready to pull them out of the fire once I start seeing some sparking going on. The reason for the sparking, which we are there now, you wanna see some of that sparking going on? Because you wanna make sure that they're at a high enough heat. So that's good to go. That one stuck, but the top one did not. So I have to take another heat on these, line that back up, and just for all intensive purposes, since I did burn that end a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit of flux to the surface. So what happened there was, is there was one, two of the pieces were at a welding heat, but the one that was on top was not at a welding heat. <coughs> so I'm going to put them in a fire, a welding fire, bring it back up to heat. Hopefully all of them will be up to heat this time and I'll be able to weld. Whenever you do feel the need to flux a piece though, I would just want to strongly caution you, do not, you do not have to just dump and dump and dump flux on it that will actually inhibit your weld. So we don't want your welds to get inhibited. I'm going to try to aim this piece to where the piece that didn't weld up is pointed further down in the fire. Get this heat up a bit. Alright, so while you're watching this video, I'd like to take time at this moment in time to say thank you for watching this video and sticking with me so thus far. I hope that you find this process interesting and informative. Also, if you would like to support what we do here at Christ Center Ironworks, a great way of you doing that is checking out our website over at blacksmithpds.com and consider purchasing a power hammer plan and or ebook or the other way that you can support us for absolutely free is share this video around with somebody that you might find that might find it helpful. Okay, so those are welded. Now I can go ahead and knock off my collar. Hopefully you guys see that. Those are all welded up. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle on just a little more flux. Just because we got some gaps here that kind of need to be filled. And I'm going to stick this piece back in there flat-like. 
and we're going to cover it from the top with more coke. And covering it with top from the top with more coke will help consume oxygen from the atmosphere. You want a fairly oxygen neutral fire when you're forge welding and that is basically the main ingredient to getting good forge welds is an oxygen neutral fire. You do all sorts of other stuff. You can throw tons of flux on it. You can clean out your forge 5, 50, 100 times before you make a weld. But 90% of the time, it always comes down to an ox over oxygenated fire. OK. So I don't want to take and hammer these up too much right here. But I do, however, want to trim this off. I'm going to do that now. Okay, got rid of that. Good to go. So we'll take one more heat on this now and start shaping. We'll weld that end in just a little better yet. We'll weld that end in just a little better yet. And then we're going to go to bumping this up and drawing a scarf on it. So I'm filming this in real time so you guys can get a good idea of how long this process should take if you're decent at your forge welding capabilities. I'm pushing the oxygen a little heavier than what I normally would just for time's sake of the demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and scarf this end here. It's up to weld heat again. Now I'll put a slight chamfer on that end. Just so this way it grips the other part real well. Putting just a small step in it there and chamfering that in just so this way it blends into the other scarf joint nicely. Just like that. Okay, we got the other piece nice and hot. We're going to jump that up here in a second or upset it right after I brush this scroll work here that's been welded. I'll brush that off so you guys can see how that looks. I want to set that off to the side of the fire so it stays warm. But now we're going to upset this piece. Keep it flat. Now, normally I would use the step of the anvil. It's a lot better to use. I'm trying to get some thickness and grow a little bit in width so that way I have something to scarf. Stick that back in the fire and get it good and hot. We want a really good localized heat on the end of this bar so this way we're pushing as much mass into the end of the bar and not really up the bar because if it goes up the bar then we have to dress all the stuff up the bar. So now you guys can see it's gotten quite a bit wider. We've been able to upset that a good bit. It's still not thick enough though. And everything I'm doing here, these are all basic techniques of the blacksmith. And I feel like to be, in order to be considered a competent blacksmith, you should be able to do all these techniques, perform them in a reasonable amount of time. What's a reasonable amount of time look like? 
Well, you should be able to at least perform all these different techniques because time is a little different for each and every person. So there we go. So we got a really nice upset on that. Got plenty of thickness there to mend the other piece to. Now it's time to dress some of the width that I've got down. That'll thicken it up a bit more. And then go ahead and draw our scarf on it. So this is what would be commonly referred to as a drop the tongs weld. If you were going to be doing a lot of these type scrolls, it may, and it was a critical thing to get these right, and you didn't want to do a drop the tongs, you could just prepare two halves to go against each other and punch a couple holes and rivet them first, then put them in the fire, bring them up to welding heat and weld them. That was a very common historical thing to do. So now we're going to go ahead and dress the width of this bar stock down, back down to one or close to one inch. And now we're going to give our scarf a little bit of a taper. We're going to dress that spread. So we wanted to have a bit of a toe there. Come back on the anvil. Create that step. Get in that toe a little more. Just so it blends nicely. There you go. There's the scarf. And pull that out. Here's our scroll work. There's our scarf to the other piece. These should be able to lay right on top of one another and stick nobody's problem. So I'm actually going to use the bigger bar when it's at welding heat to hold the little bar at welding heat on the anvil, drop the tongs, and get my weld. So again, that's how those look. Let me get these up and going. So we gotta bring both these pieces up to welding heat at the same time. This is what most people have problems with when they're doing a drop the tongs weld is they'll get one piece up really hot or above welding temp and they'll get the other piece at, oh, it'll be at a lower welding temp or just roughly about just getting into a welding temp. They'll take these pieces, they'll throw them on the anvil. The one that's not at a full welding heat will be chilled quickly. It'll chill down too quickly and you won't end up making the weld stick because they were at two different temperatures. Also, speed, speed, my friends, is of the essence, speed. With doing welds like this, anything that is roughly, say, 3 eighths of an inch, up to about 3 eighths to half an inch, you can get away with about three seconds for a weld. That's your maximum. So if you don't have it welded in three seconds, it's not going to be welded, essentially. So I'm making sure to check the orientation of my bars. That way when they go together, they'll be able to mend together nicely. I've got the little one with the, I've got the scroll details in the upwards position. I've got the large bar in the downwards position, so this way I can bring them around, set it, and weld. I'm not going to give it the garbanzo beans, I'm just going to tap it together. If we ever get it up to a welding heat here. Now this is a very dirty end of the day fire that I'm doing this in. So if it doesn't weld, 
don't be super shocked because it's something I should really have took an extra time for really for the most part so I've got my main bar up to heat but I don't have my my actual scroll work up to heat it's starting to spark off so I'm going to let back a little bit of the air airflow I think it's where it needs to be we're pretty close now looks like this is going to be a good heat so I'm going to bring it out and we're going to get a weld hopefully there we go one weld let's get it back in the fire and covered we need to protect it from the oxygen so get it back in the fire and covered as soon as possible and take it back to a welding heat so you saw all that happened in roughly about a second and a half you can time clock me if you want if you're that into the work now as we bring this back up to a welding heat this is just surface welded at this point we need to bring it back up to a full welding heat and then I need to continue to hammer on it a little bit to start getting it to go together because the fire is so dirty I may throw a little flux on at this point to just make sure that I get the weld but we'll come to that as we come to it hopefully you all have enjoyed this video so far until those toes are fully blended in of the scarfs you take a risk you take a risk of this piece just popping right off it has a surface adhesion right now but it is not fully welded you have to work those surfaces into each other more so bring it up to a full welding heat let it simmer at that heat in your fire for a moment. We're getting, we're getting real close with this. And as soon as it's to temperature, I'm not going to yank it out of the fire. I'm going to lift straight up. I'm going to shift and lift straight up and come right over here and work out my joint. I will also take this up to more of a sparkling heat, hot heat. I want it to be almost white hot when I do it. I'm getting real close. Check my weld there. I'm pretty close to it now. I'm starting to get enough sparks. Let's go for it. Alright, there's no point in going any further with that until I get this brushed. I'm going to throw a little bit of flux right out at the toes. This is where it's acceptable to use some flux now, is because those toes won't want to blend in because they trap dirt right at the toe of the weld. So I'm going to just throw just a little bit on there, right where it needs to have some lapping to go together. And that's it. Just a couple pinches will do it. I'm also going to cool off my elements, my forged elements, besides the weld. So this way they don't get overheated by the fire. Man, I hope you all are enjoying this. I'm enjoying making this video for you. I hope it inspires you that, hey, you can make all this that I've made in this, these, this video series. You can make all these different things right at hammer and anvil. All these scrolls were basically made right here on the anvil face, being scrolled over the edge. All of the twists were made with a simple vise and a twisting wrench. The, all the welds are done right here. The, collar that I made there was no special tooling it was done right here and I hope you find that that's valuable to you and that excites you 
that you don't need the most specialized tooling in the world to do this. You just need the skills available to you and the knowledge of how to apply those skills in the proper order of techniques to end up with something beautiful in the long run. Here we go. Going to town. Bring this up to full heat and we'll see where we're at. Now, I will say this, I've got a clinker, a big old clinker at the bottom of this fire right now. And the way I can tell is because I've got to push extra air through the fire to get it up to temp. And I don't like doing that. So that tells you that there's too much, uh, there's too much, how are we gonna say, too much clinker sitting at the bottom. Okay, this is good and this is out of heat. got some more welding to do on this, but I think you all get the point. And I, I'm almost out of time on my camera here to film this in one go. But I just wanted to show it to you guys and get you excited about it. Of all the possibilities that you guys can do, you guys and girls out there can do, to add this little tool to your arsenal. Now I've got several little cleanup welds to do and I need to clean that fire out. Like I said, I'm almost out of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it quits here. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to leave a like, comment what you thought in the comment section down below. And as always, God bless you and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching.